I think the most challenging aspect to embroidering a knitted project is planning and uh, spacing and getting an even result in your embroidery, especially if you are newer to embroidery, as I am, um, and perhaps you are. Uh, there are a couple of different methodologies in the world, uh, melt away tracing papers and stencils and hooping and so on. Um, and none of them are really appropriate for this particular project because of the scale of the, of the whole project um, and the, the number of flowers that you're going to be doing. So I developed an alternative form of planning that I think this will be um, really supportive for you in going ahead with this um, and in the next section of the this video I will actually embroider the flowers so you can watch how I do that but right now I'm going to show you how I placed uh, these flowers um, it, when I did a little I did a little swatch and I found out that my and I measured the flowers in my resulting swatch and I found I really liked um, the flowers that were about the size of a soup can so I um, used my handy dandy Picanagoya uh, here and traced out some circles, uh, which turned out to be, they're about three inches in diameter. And I cut these out in multiples and used the multiples to plan ahead, uh, which, you know, of course, that makes an awful lot of sense, but how do you embroider those circles? Um, once I had embroidered the circles, I, or, or had, sorry, had cut out the circles, I um, did a, a an opposite template as well. So once I had placed a circle, I knew where it was going to be, um, I could overlay this reverse template on top of it and uh, pin it in place and then embroider inside the circle. Um, and I'm going to show you how that works in the next segment. I need a swatch in a lighter color, uh, which will make it easier to see for filming. Um, so the placement of any flower is essentially the same. Um, we're going to place the flower as if it were an, uh, a round uh, after embroidered flowers are already there. And I'll show you how I establish the position and go on to embroider the actual flower. <clears throat> so um, when you tr trace your circle, um, if you pre plan what I call petal points. Um, this one happens to be eight. Um, I ended up really preferring uh, nine as a, a, a my most frequent use um, flower. Um, once you, you can, you can uh, pre-plan out those petal points and um, cut out the, uh, the, the, the circle and you end up with this lovely reverse template so that when you place your flower, um, say, say you, you're going to put your next daisy there, you can overlay uh, this template on top of it, take out your circle, and then stitch inside of it using the petal points as your guide. Um, but if you're, of course, adding a second uh, round to existing petal points, I think it's uh, really handy to have the petal points also um, on your plain old circle so that you can use these points to plan for them to weave into the petals that are from the round before or as it, with its neighbors. Um, you, you can make this as closely woven together or as loosely as, as, as you like, but just so that you don't end up with these little dice stitches sort of you know, accidentally sticking up um, next to each other in the fabric. So it's slightly awkward, although um, I think a certain amount of irregularity is charming in this particular project. But take your template, figure out where you want your, you know, your petals to go so that they fit nicely. And then you can match that up with um, your template, your, your, your stitching template um, for the next round, which is about here. Um, so if we take that out and then we can pin this in place. Now you can use um, big old uh, straight pins if you happen to have those in your sewing kit. Um, I happen to own these, uh, are, these are quilting uh, safety pins um, and I use them to pin uh, the, the project in place and then I get stitching. So I've pinned my template in place and I'm ready to stitch. So I have a piece of doubled yarn here that I like the doubled yarn uh, look. It gives the petals a certain amount of uh, uh, weight, I guess. Um, and this is almost, I mean, three and a half feet long. Um, you could go longer uh, but, or shorter. You can do multiple strands to get one flower done. Um, but just to start here, I'm going to um, bring my yarn 
um, out of the flower, leaving a center opening um, of about an inch across, uh, which I'm gonna later fill up with uh, French knots. So my first petal I'm going to make, um, have, I'm going to make this, this one that goes straight up here. And so I know that the, the bottom of that petal is going to be about there. So I'm going to bring my yarn out at, the, uh, at this point, my arrival point. I don't know if there's a technical term for this. And those of you who are proper embroiderers are probably cringing. But here is my arrival point, and I'm going to put my yarn back into the same point. So my departure point is going to be the same uh, really opening in the fabric. And then I'm going to, at the same time, without pulling everything through, I'm going to have um, a new arrival point at the top of the petal, and I'm going to sort of preview it that way by looping the yarn around the end of my needle, and I like that very much. And so I'm just going to keep everything a little bit under tension here and uh, pull the yarn through gently. Now, if you were um, using a hoop or a stabilizer, that you wouldn't have to worry so much about this. But um, with with knit with the, with the knitting, um, you don't want to buckle your fabric, so you don't want to pull anything too tight here. Um, and then my uh, I'm going to catch this petal here by putting my needle back in. Um, now, I I you could put it back in the same place, but I'm going to actually put it in um, one ladder above that in my fabric, just for a little security sake. Um, and then in one movement, I'm really just gonna think about this next petal here. So I'm just gonna put my needle, pull my needle back um, in here so that the bottom of that petal would be a nice uh, consequence of this, of this being the end point for that petal. Um, now you can do this in a couple of different movements um, or you can do it in one, whatever it is that you're comfortable with. And uh, make a little adjustment. And since this is the end of my fab of my of my yarn here, I'm gonna take some a little some liberties to it with it. So there we go. Um, so here is my new uh, petal that I'm gonna be working on. Um, and again, I'm gonna put my needle back into the same uh, spot as my arrival. I'm gonna have the end of the petal be uh, about where the template tells me that I really would like for it to be. Um, I audition it a little bit, like that very much, and then pull it through, keeping everything tidy and under tension. Again, so a little adjustment. And then um, back into the fabric, not exactly in the same place as it came out before. Now, here's my next petal point. Where is that? Where would that be a good place to come out in? I think that might be a good one. So you may feel a little bit at sea about where you want this center um, circle to be, this, this opening. Um, I did say I would like for it to be about an inch across. Um, it, it would be something that you could do is you could go back to your pre-planning template and you could trace a circle um, around that center spot like this that's about um, a, a, an inch or so and then cut that out and then use another one of these lovely quilting pins or a regular old safety pin and put that in the middle um, so that your, you know, your I guess these compass lines or whatever these petal lines match your outside lines so that you know where you begin and where you uh, end are going to match up nicely. And that can be a nice guide for you to start out with um, until you get more comfortable with your stitching. So um, you may also find at some point that a crochet hook might be something you might want for teasing the tension out. Uh, I think that's, that's up to you, um, but that, just letting you know that that's another resource that you might have. Um, so here's my arrival point, and here I'm going to go back into there. I'm going to wrap my yarn again around the end of my needle and um, pull it through. I've got a little time tangled up here, which is why it's a good thing that um, to use safety pins instead of straight pins. Straight pins might you might catch and split your yarn, um, but it, work with what you have by all means. Now you can also. You have this go one strand of yarn. So here's my new one. I think I'm gonna want my petal to be, uh, where do I want it to be? About there, yeah. I think that might be where I want it to be. Let's take a look. Now, um, hmm, do I like where that ended up? I think I might actually want it to be there that it arrives. So at this point, I'm just going to feed my yarn back 
into the fabric. Make sure that, because I don't really like where it ended up. Um, and so I, I'm gonna correct this now. As long as I haven't split any threads, everything should work out very nicely. Okay, I like that very much. That's so much better. <laughs> it's such a small difference, but um, I like that a lot. So I'm gonna put my needle back in here and come out here. And this is really how it's going to go all the way around. Now I... Okay, so here I'm almost running out of yarn. I really have just enough yarn for one more petal. So at this point, um, I think I will make that petal. I'll get, get to here. If you'll put up with me talking to myself here. So here is my last petal. And what I am going to do at this point is I'm gonna make that little lice stitch, pack it down, so you can see back here, this is what this looks like. Okay, so um, fastened off the uh, end of that yarn, and now I'm just going to start again with another piece of yarn. Um, again, I'm just going to sort of come in from someplace out of the way, and you can watch me finish this up or fast forward to the French knot section at this point. I'll find a little fluff there. adjustment. Do I like where that is? No, I don't like where that is. I'm going to move it to there. Yes, I need to prefer that. And have that come out. Since this is going to be my last petal, I think I'm just going to take the pins off and finish it up here. I think I'm going to put that there instead. And stitch my last little bit here. I'm going to 
and show you how I fasten off in the back. There. Um, I, I find a way to um, sort of wrap this around something so that it, it's actually sort of hitched, uh, give, it, give, give it some kind of hitching post. Um, you could do that through the back of a, a stitch. Um, you, know, you could use the, the needle to thread through the back of the stitch, or you could go, um, in this particular case, I've got these threads here. Um, just one of these threads goes around um, another one of these threads, and I begin a, um, a square knot. But um, for the next, the second half of the square knot, instead of just being um, once over, I go twice over. Um, and it's that extra pass that ruins the symmetry, I guess, of the knot and um, makes it really super secure. And then I just give it a trim here, as I will these guys over here that I just showed you. And that is the back of the swatch. And that is what it looks like. Now on to French knots. There are plenty of uh, videos here on YouTube uh, about French knots, and you're certainly free to consult them after you've watched me do mine. Um, this is just a few more minutes here, and uh, I'll show you how, how, they, how they work. Um, a length of yarn doubled again because I like the weight of it in the finished piece. Um, the needle comes from behind the work to the front. Uh, leave a, something of a tail so that you have something to work with with your um, tying off. I wrap the yarn so that the, the, the trick is to keep the yarn under tension. I wrap the yarn around the needle from the, my, from the finger end to the tip end and I wrap it around the needle um, away from me twice. One, two. Now this end of the needle goes back into the fabric, not in the same place that it arrived. Um, so just a, a ladder up um, and keeping, and, and at this point I might give the uh, wrapped yarn a little bit of a tug so that it isn't too sloppy. It keeps it nice and tidy. Um, so I have it under um, a certain amount of tension. And, and it is here that I just pull the yarn through with the needle like this. You know, so you can see that I'm, I'm still keeping it under tension so that it doesn't get sort of too, too tangled. You want a little bit of tangle because of course that's what makes the French knot, but it's a very organized tangle. Um, and that's why uh, it comes out looking like that. Um, and I just, I, I think it's just no end of entertaining. I could do a whole bunch of these all at once. So again, um, wrap the yarn away from you twice around the end of the needle. Put the needle back into the fabric, not in the same exact place that it came out. Hold the yarn under tension and pull it through. Adjust your tension a little bit, and voila, French knots. So fun. Um, any number of these that you like, fill this up. Keep it sparse, even number, odd number. Um, but there you have it. That is how to embroider the Little Blossom sweater.